Hello, Howdy. everybody. <laughs> Today we have with us Josh Ballard, our uh, friend, our friend, and our web host for the podcast. So this is his first time guesting for us. Yay! Yay! I feel like for better me. off dead. I'm like you know, friends. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, today we're going to talk about the Wineville Chicken Coop murders, which exactly. is what the 2008 film Changeling, which had John Malkovich and Angelina Jolie, is partly based on that. This so, sounds so weird, though, what they named the case, Chicken Coop. Yeah. It's well, because that's where the bodies they... were found. Anyway, yeah. well, I guess that's a spoiler. That's a spoiler, but I'm sorry. <laughs> but I mean, it's called Chicken Coop Murders. You should know there's going to be bodies. Exactly. Um, or breakfast. <laughs> I I want some breakfast now. Thanks. Is it the place in Memphis called the Chicken Coop Restaurant? Mm -hmm. It's possible. It's Memphis. I thought there was a restaurant, uh, a big chicken restaurant in Memphis, like a chain that was only in Memphis called the Chicken Coop. Okay. And somehow we've got, our, got started on the food part of the podcast, huh? Yeah, we, it, it always happens. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I have a one-track mind, and it's always food. Well, There's actually, that's not here. true. I have a two-track mind. It's it's food or murder. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you are right, Josh. There's a the chicken coop in Memphis that sells chicken wings. Okay. Nice. Now I want to go try that. Yeah, sounds good to me. Oh, God. I know this has nothing to do with anything on the show, but I got a Ninja Foodie last week for my birthday. Congrats. And, birthday. and I, am, I got one used. Aren't you obsessed? Out here. Aren't oh my so god, upset? yes. I cook I have not cooked a meal outside of that motherfucker. We, we need to need them as a sponsor. Ninja Foodie, I know. we we love you. I don't have one yet. We're obsessed. <laughs> we you should yeah, we need that sponsor. But especially the air fryer. I've only used the pressure cooker part once to make a roast, which you know Yeah. From prep from prep to finish was only like an hour. It's an hour, oh, so, it, yeah. yeah. I do an it's Instapot all, it's, for that, and it, yeah, it's an hour. Yeah, we have fantastic. an Instapot, and then we have the Instapot Pampered Chef blender thingy that actually will cook soup. You can actually warm stuff yes. up in the blender, which is neat as all get out. Yeah. Well, mine, I, you can use like saute and stuff to like warm mm -hmm. stuff up just like on the stove, on the air fryer. So I use that. I've, on it, our microwave went out <laughs> about oh, the same time. Perfect so timing. I'm ha I, I've been having to like rewarm leftovers in there too. Like just turn it on lower setting and, and saute it. Which is well, fun. Our microwave. Works, right? Go ahead. But I found, I got a new microwave too. We we put it on the card. I'm broke, but we 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 put it on the card and got me a new microwave. It's a little it's a cute little like aqua colored like retro. Oh, oh it's retro. Microwave. Nice. Yes. I, I love for retro my kitchen anything. I figured Well, my my kitchen is all yellow and it's very retro, so I thought right, the, the aqua would <laughs> the aqua would, <laughs> would go with it. Anyway, but chicken yeah, I've been cook, I've been, we have had chicken every meal because I just throw some chicken in there and cook it, <laughs> and it's, it's done. It's just like we've had every form of chicken. We've had like the breaded chicken tenders, the grilled chicken tenders. We've had chicken patties <laughs> to make chicken sandwiches. Jump, jump. <laughs> I know, and, and we've had just red plain old chicken, sandwich, chicken fillets, chicken grill. Yep. <laughs> And chicken last night grips. I cooked some chicken in it. Yeah, last night I cooked some chicken in it and made myself some uh, chicken rom chicken curry ramen, and it was amazing. Um, and now I cook ramen. Me. Yeah, no, <laughs> it doesn't. I can't do curry. It it smell the smell. Just I've never. Oh yeah, tasted and you can curry. I just I can't do it because of the smell. It's like no. And mm -hmm. if you. If you eat a bunch of it, it's like you can smell it coming out of your pores when you yes. sweat. Yes. Oh, God, no. So, yes. No, yeah. that's disgusting. Don't live on I'll, curry. But I love I it, had though. the same problem with garlic-related dishes when I first got married. Actually, before we got mm -hmm. married, 
my wife made me stop eating garlic stuff for a while because she said you smell like a garlic bread sandwich. <laughs> See, and I That's like terrible. garlic. I don't even mind the smell of garlic. It doesn't bother me. But curry, there's just something gross about it. I love it. But anyway, I'm, oh. I'm addicted to it. <laughs> but I guess we need to get to the show. Yeah, we're already we all... five minutes <laughs> and we're just talking about food. We need another podcast where we just talk about food, right? Totally. And I need another totally. podcast I'll be on where that I talk time. about freaking... And I need another one where we talk about pop culture because everybody around me is pop culture obsessed. Like, I can't even be friends with somebody if they're, like, not into pop into culture it, stuff. Yeah. Right. I'm, like, I'm right there with you. Yeah. Like, what would we talk about? Because I'm obsessed. Speaking of which, uh, this sort of has to do with the podcast, but not really. I started watching, we we finished, we binged uh, the new Unsolved Mysteries over the past two Fantastic. days. Fantastic. I thought it was so well done. I haven't I seen don't it. Well away. Done. It's on Netflix. It's on Netflix there. now. Yeah. They produced it. Um so, but instead of, of it being instead of like the 80s where it's like five or six segment segments within an episode, it's just one story per episode. Oh, and there, okay. And there's only six episodes, but they kept the same song. It's just like a kind of a new, new version of it. Of it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but episode two had me screaming at the. We need to screen. we need to do an episode on our podcast about that episode, strictly about that episode, because I have so many questions and so many things I want to say about that. So we'll yeah. give it a couple of weeks to make sure that everybody's watched it and can send us like emails or or give us a phone call, leave a message about what their take on it, and then we need to do an episode on that. Cool. Just what, he, just what he said. Oh yeah, just, we uh, needed it with the, the episode. We just need to go ahead and name it. What about Bob? <laughs> what about Bob? Because his name was Bob. Now I've got yeah. to. What about Bob? Just what now about I've got Bob. to look it up. You have to. Um, and then the last episode was very upsetting to me about the mother and the daughters. Uh, mm, yes. We. I, I was thinking was we could do an episode upset. on that one too. Yeah. I looked her up, you know, she's on Facebook. Um, she's hiding on Facebook under another name. She's remarried. Um, her husband, her new husband's name is Joe Wink, and he is still on Facebook. He's out in the open on Facebook, but hmm. she's going under a, a pseudonym. But yeah, she's still out there. It's unsolved. Wow. Uh I can't wait to see this. I was always such a fan of Unsolved Mysteries as a kid. It freaked me out a few times. Uh, yeah, those, those yeah. two in particular will infuriate you because Absolutely. you, from the episode, you know who did it. It's right there in your face. And, yeah, yeah, it's you know who did it, but it's just not enough evidence or anything to do anything about it. Right. And scary. It's, it's upsetting. It's upsetting. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, let's get to the episode before we run out of time. <laughs> um, on on March 10th, 1928, Christine Collins gave her nine-year-old son Walter money for the cinema. He never returned from the show. His mother reported him missing, but despite the police's best efforts, they turned up no trace of him for five months. Man, I One couldn't imagine August, being without five... my kids for that long. One of my kids yeah, for that long. That's crazy. Mm-mm. And they weren't really doing anything because, let's face it, that's that's what happens a lot of times, especially yeah. with missing persons, because they're just like, mm. run away. In a lot of cases, they just think, yeah, run away, or they, you know, they just don't think it's worth their time. You know, they're like, unless something, unless we know for sure something happened to them, then we don't care. You know, um, his, but basically, on one day in August, five months after his disappearance, a boy appeared in DeKalb, Illinois, claiming to be the missing Walter. Christine Collins paid for his transportation from Illinois back to California, but the boy who arrived, although bearing a resemblance to him, was not Walter Collins. Despite Collins' insistence of that fact and suffering under the pressure to close the case, the Los Angeles P the Police Department suggested she take him on and try, try, try the boy out. Okay, if you somebody said that in reference to yeah a, a kid that is not your kid, you would be 
No. <laughs> that doesn't sound right on any level. No. No. Exhausted from protesting his val validity, Collins consented to take him home. Three weeks later, Collins had had enough. This boy was not her son, and she was determined to prove it. She went to the police captain, J.J. Jones, telling him this was not the right boy. As proof, she brought dental records that showed her son Walter had several fillings which did not match the boy. The police had been trying to pass off as her son as he had no evidence of any dental work. In spite of the evidence, Jones, wow. rather than face the negative publicity, re refused to take Collins' insistence seriously. Instead, Jones had Collins committed to the Los Angeles County General Hospital Psychiatric Ward under Code 12 internment, a code to commit someone who is deemed difficult or an inconvenience. That's just like, insane to me. A mother knows that this child is not hers. She did not give birth to this child. This child does not belong to her. Her child is missing. And of all things, the police just hand her another kid. Where did this kid come from? Was he an orphan? There's more about him later. Yeah, it's, okay. there's more about him underneath here. Christine Collins was kept under evaluation for 10 days, but in that time, the boy admitted to not being the real Walter Collins. So he saved her ass, but she might have ended up the rest of her life in the freaking insane asylum. I would have had to been put there anyway, just for all the shit that went down. Yeah. The imposter was actually Arthur Hutchins Jr., a 12-year-old boy from Iowa who was running away from an unhappy home life. After hearing from others how much he resembled Walter Collins, he decided to pose as the missing boy in an attempt to get a free trip from Iowa to California. Wow. Once the truth came once the truth came out, he just sounded, you know, I mean, what kid doesn't want to go to California? Disneyland is there. I mean, you know, like. <laughs> 1929, there was no Disneyland. Really and what I want to know, but I mean, but 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 how you know, California still was like a magical place back then. I mean, still it was La La Land. It was yeah, through and through La La Land. Yeah. What I really want to know is how they figured this kid got to Illinois from California to begin with, much less how to get him back. Five months is a long time to do, enough time to do it. I mean, it just do it doesn't make sense. I'm sure they put him on a train. Yeah. Um, I, in the movie, I don't think I I couldn't didn't find anything about this. I don't know if it was just something they made up for the movie. In the movie, she sees him in the bathtub, and then she takes him up there. And one of I can't remember which is which, but one of them was circumcised, and one of them wasn't. Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if that was that's something that was real or something they just added to the movie, but <clears throat> yeah, I think that would make a big case for you. Right that's, very <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's very noticeable. Yeah, that's very noticeable. Because you can take it off, but you can't put it back on. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um once the truth came out, Christine was released from the psychiatric ward and filed a false imprisonment case against the city. She won the lawsuit, and Jones was ordered to pay $10,800 to Collins. She planned to use the funds to continue her search for her son, but Jones never paid. Because one of you Google how much that would be in today's money. I got it. Let's see. Because I'm curious about that. 1928, $10,800, and it was 1928. So I, I'm just curious how much that is in today's money. <clears throat> so let's see. That's the equivalent of $161,000. So not, not too shabby. Not great, but not too shabby. Mm, not worth the charge, yeah. No, no, no. How are the... However, the police did finally turn up a lead on the case. They believed that Walter Collins was one of the victims of Gordon Stewart Northcott, a murderer who was responsible for killings in the infamous Wineville Chicken Coop murders near Los Angeles. The police found bits of body parts and clothing that matched Walter's inside Northcott's chicken coop, leading them to believe that he was one of Northcott's victims. Northcott was convicted of murdering three boys and ultimately received the death sentence. However, he never admitted to mur the murder of Walter Collins, and Walter's body was never found, despite the physical evidence Collins refused to accept that Northcott had murdered her son so she still kept looking for him pretty much for her entire life 
Yeah, yeah. Wow. And unless there was a body, I hate to say it, I would have done the same thing. I would have never, yeah. never given, I would have stayed in the same place, the same house, and never, never even left that house. I would have become agoraphobic. I would have just stayed there waiting on my child to come back. Yeah. Unlike Yochi's mother, who six months after she was missing had moved to Texas, you know, that's another this, story. Yeah. This, um, her, her resolve was only strengthened when one of the other boys that Northcott was accused of killing turned up alive five years later, claiming to have escaped the chicken coop. So, clinging on to that last bit of hope, she spent the rest of her life searching for Walter until her death in Los Angeles at the age of 75. So, that's just really sad to me, though. This is so mean, sad. I can't imagine losing your child and never seeing them again. And not knowing no. where they are, just, just missing. I, it's just, and then for the police to just slap her in the face by tossing her another kid. Then, Here you go, random child. It kind of looks like yours. Yeah. It'll make, it's child out. It'll grow. It'll grow Close on. Enough. But mm. the true number of boys that he killed and sexually abused is unknown because he never really admitted responsibility you know like he wouldn't talk about it like that basically the the boys that they know for sure had been I killed think they there found like three wasn't it three it's bodies? three it was three officially but it was a big pile of bones and back then there wasn't no dna testing so right. it was a big pile of bones and some clothes and stuff you know like um so they they don't really know honestly and unless but he was, he was up... found and convicted, right? Yeah, North yeah. Thought. He was found, mm -hmm. he was convicted, and I, I assume back then they were really big on execution, so I assume he was executed pretty soon after. Well, I he was hung. I'm reading the rest, the rest of this um, so that I can give my voice a break. <laughs> sure, wait, let's find out where you're at here. You're at clean to the bullet. Where, where the little bullet, the, the bullet, the bullet. Okay, points. I got it. So, Gordon Stewart Northcott was a chicken farmer in his late teens. That's what throws me off about the whole thing. This kid was, this guy was young as I'll get out, and he was committing all these murders. What on earth? From 1926 to 1928, he abducted young boys. He kept his captives in his chicken coop located on the Northcott family farm in Wineville, California. He sexually assaulted the children, the boys, before killing them. Then he buried their bodies around the chicken coop. Authorities reportedly found graves underneath the structure filled with quicklime, bones, and boys' clothing. So he tried to melt the bones down with the uh, quicklime. Interesting. He axed young boys that he picked up, molested them. He reportedly continued the cycle of abuse of his father, Cyrus George Northcott, had started. Northcott claimed his father had sodomized him when he was 10 years old. Northcott also maintained that his mother dressed him in girls' clothes until he was the age of 16. So. And? Obviously his family life wasn't wasn't great. Um, yeah. What on earth is going on yeah, with this so family? It looks like you know, both of his parents were abusing him, so. You gotta so it, reminds me, it, it reminds me of um, that X-Files episode, Home. I mean, they, they were like, you know, wrong turn type Neanderthal retarded, whatever that the word would be for them. But it's like the whole family, you know, is in it together. Texas Chainsaw Massacre style or, yeah. or whatever. Just the whole family. The mother, the father, and they got the son involved. And yeah. That's, so mm -mm. the woman that Gordon Northcott called mother, Sarah Louise Northcott, might not have been his biological mother. Might not have even been his real mother, yeah. So you got to wonder where she came from, and there's got to be a little bit more history to that. We'll have to dig into that sometime. The courts brought Sarah Louise from pr from prison in order to testify in Northcott's trial about his unknown family origins. Sarah Louise contended that Northcott was the result of an inbred union between his sister, Winifred Clark, and his father. Just This whole just keeps di getting deeper. I know, yeah. So Sarah Louise uh, Sarah Northcott, Louise Northcott lived in North Hamlet. I'm gonna read the rest. I'm gonna read the rest out. You keep breaking up. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. The that's fine. Sarah Louise Northcott lived in Los Angeles during her son's time in Wineville. She reportedly went to visit her son at the same time that he had nine-year-old Walter Collins trapped in his chicken coop. 
Sarah Louise meant later maintained that she first proposed the plan to kill Walter as a way to protect her son. According to her story, Northcott and his 13-year-old nephew, Sanford Clark, repeatedly hit Walter. She testified to her participation. They, they then dismembered the body and buried it in quicklime. So the mother says that he did do it. But she's crazy too, so I... And she's I saying that she encouraged she him to do it. Her own, yes. That she came up with the plan. Like, I don't... Who would admit to that? Like, wouldn't you at least... Even if you, like, witnessed it or something, like, like wouldn't you downplay your involvement? Because that's what most people yeah. do. And then I'm so, saying that just because she was a woman where, where Northcott got... Uh, he was executed in 1930 by hanging. She was granted mercy because she was a woman sentenced to life in prison in San Quentin, but received early release and faded into obscurity. Just, just she was out. in there for 12 years, wasn't she? I think I saw that in the notes. Yeah. yeah. That's um, crazy. They collectively admitted to the deaths of the three boys, although Northcott later claimed he killed 20 boys or more which wow. I don't doubt, because obviously this person has a pattern. Um, the deaths that authorities definitively attributed to Northcott included, include brothers Lewis Winslow, age 12, and Nelson Winslow, age 10, and then Walter Collins, age 9, and an unnamed Mexican boy whose headless body prevented him from being positively identified. All were chopped up and buried on the Northcott chicken farm. Wow. Yeah. Um, Northcott abducted the Winslow brothers in May of 1928 to provide a cover for their disappearance. He wrote a letter to the brothers' parents. The letter claimed that they had run away but were fine. The note was written on paper torn from the flyleaf of a book found on the Northcott farm. That, along with the bodies of the Winslow brothers, re revealed their true fates as two of Northcott's victims. In 1926, North Northcott asked his older sister, sister Jessie to send her 13 year old son Sanford Clark to help Northcott on the chicken farm. The teen left his home in Saskatchewan, Canada with his 21 year old uncle. Reportedly Northcott abused Clark. Clark later testified that his uncle molested him, beat him regularly, and forced him at gunpoint to watch and even participate in the murder of several boys. In 1928 Jessie Clark came to visit the farm to check on her son. Clark told her everything and after Northcott attacked her she informed their mother about the situation on the farm. Jesse left and contacted the authorities who went to the farm to investigate. After the police closed in on the chicken farm in 1928, Northcott and his mother fled back to their native Canada. However, they left a crucial witness behind, Northcott's nephew, who told the police about the crimes. The Northcotts hid out in British Columbia, where authorities then apprehended Northcott. Police arrested Sarah Louise in Alberta. While they were awaiting extradition back to the U.S., Northcott gave an interview to the Vancouver Daily Sun. In it, he claimed to be innocent and that he had only fled to protect his mother from the shock of the accusations leveled against him. Bullshit. She already knew. Yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> once word got out about Northcott and the bodies buried under and around his chicken coop, the national media descended on the tiny town of Wineville, California. They nicknamed Northcott an ape man because of his, his extremely hairy arms and back. The media subsequently reported every detail about the murder farm and the resu resulting trial. The Republic recorded Northcott's trial as sensationalized and ridiculous. He insisted on representing himself in court because, you know, oh, Lord. he's another, mm. like another Ted Bundy type of bullshit. Thinks he can out, probably thought he could outsmart, outsmart them or something. Yeah. yeah. He insisted on representing himself in court after firing several licensed defense attorneys. Northcott then put himself on the stand and grilled himself by asking and answering his own questions. Okay, wow. he's cray cray. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's Throughout, the trial, he kept, no. Throughout the trial, he kept insisting that he loved the boys and he had killed, loved the boys he had killed and claimed that he was in a sexual relationship with his mother. Um, Ew. Yeah. That's just the that media published more. every. I mean, he's fucking basically fucking... saying everything that can make him look bad. He's saying this is me. Yeah. National media published every minute of the circus. The state of California found Northcott guilty on three counts. He was executed by hanging in 1930. Sarah was sentenced to life in prison. 
for Walter Collins' death. Sarah Louise paroled in 1940, but died four years later. Sanford Clark never faced any charges, as law enforcement considered him a victim of no Northcott's coercion and abuse. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm torn on that. It's like, on one hand, yeah, he was a victim, but at the same time, he did participate in some of the stuff. So I feel like they should have at least given him a slap on the hand. Come on. Probably um, got him some institutional time, at least. Yeah, something. Something. Put, make, for, make him have some forced therapy for that shit. Something. Yeah. Um, and I, I just wanted to add this on at the end because I thought it was interesting. In 1931, the town of Wineville officially became Mira Loma. The small farming community was tired of the negative publicity associated with the North Cod and the press dubbed Wineville Chicken Coop Murders. The community wanted a fresh start. Today is... Mira Loma is a part of a larger town, Jerupa Valley. So, and where is that close to San Francisco, I guess, I think? Looking at the map, or it's like on the Los very Angeles. south. It's pretty south. South, okay. It's going to yeah. be Los Angeles, between Los Angeles and San Diego or so. I don't know. I've never heard of that place. I've driven all over California, but I've, I don't know that place. But, yeah, I, I just, the whole thing was interesting. Um, the most interesting aspect yeah, to me is, is passing the kid off. I still, I'm still going back to how the police gave her another child and said that it was hers. That's just. Can you imagine and, and doing that like, in this day and age? Like in in 2020, the cops handing a woman who's missing a child another kid and saying this kid is yours. <laughs> it's just. I, spoiler that's... alert! Spoiler alert! I have another case. That's Mississippi based. That's similar to this. Uh, Bobby Dunn. Oh wow! If you've ever heard of it, guys, um, a little kid that came up missing, and then the they brought a different kid back to her, and and said it was her. They, yeah, but they continued. To, he continued to live out his life with them, and what? Yeah, but the but on the but the how it differs though is the kid was a baby when it came up missing. Okay. So okay, okay, that makes a little, a little bit, little of bit difference because yeah, a lot but of babies just, do look alike. And I think the mother was in denial because that she wanted be. it to be the baby. You know, like yeah. she wanted yeah. it to be her baby. Like, and that's understandable too. But, how did they find out that it wasn't? Um, I think some of his family actually he's he's gone now, but yeah. some of his family got DNA tests or something done after the fact. I think this is actually in recent years that they got DNA done oh. and found out that it was not him. And so, so where's the baby? Know, nobody knows. Nobody what? knows. But just missing I, I kid and people are ignoring it sometimes. The people in authority, I just can't get over, like you just said, it being some random other kid. So I looked up uh, this author Hutchinson, or Hutchins Jr., and it says basically he wanted to Calif come to California to meet his favorite actor, who was Tom Mix. I don't know who Tom Mix is, but that, yep, I'm bored with, oh, my, I'm bored with my house. Yeah, I'm he was a famous Western actor. Kid. That's crazy. But we are going to cover the Bobby Dunbar case just because it's based out of Mississippi. I can't um, wait to hear that one. God, I, I want to I want to say, I don't think it, no, it's not Vicksburg, but it's somewhere down in that general area, I think. Uh, so. I'll yeah, to, I'm going to have to research that one. I have not heard of that. Me either. It's so a I'm, really, I'm really interesting case. And, and like I said, it's an older case. It's an older case, like I said, because he's passed away now. But um, it's got a little bit of media coverage over the last few years because of the, you know, his family getting the DNA test to find out. Because he actually didn't want to know. Because he had been offered DNA tests before to find out for sure if it if it was him. And he turned it down. And he, he turned it down because he's like, this is my family. I'm sure this, this was after his, his mother, or I guess you should say adopted mother at this point, had passed too. Because I'm sure she didn't want to, she didn't want to know either. Or she did know and just didn't want it to come out. So, that's another case we're going to cover sometime in the future. But that's okay. got a little bit of similarity to that. 
Um, it's been on my list for a while, like I said, because I, I like to just sprinkle in some Mississippi cases. because Always. It's yeah. our home state. Welcome and down home. There's so much crazy down here. There is so much crazy. <laughs> Yeah, we had a um, a new fan randomly message me, and and she wants us to cover the Jessica Chambers case. So we're probably going to do that. Oh, soon. out of Panola County. Yeah, yeah, they're around baseball. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we're probably going to do that one soon, too, because the fan requested it. Sure. And she's a brand new fan, so I feel like I have to suck up, right? <laughs> <laughs> you must keep her. Not um, in a chicken coop. <laughs> not, yeah, not in a chicken coop. Just the basement. Um. I am Hope redoing mine. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there's always fun stuff happening in the basement. Yeah. Yes, that was sarcasm. Unless you're in the, well, now I'm starting to think of the toy box killer. So, yeah, maybe not. Although it wasn't a basement. His was the back of an 18-wheeler. But Creepy. Um, We need to add that right now. I'm, when are you planning on releasing this? Are you putting it out tonight? Are you putting it out tomorrow? If I have enough time, if I have enough time tonight, tomorrow I have plans with family. Okay. Uh, for the um, fourth, but. I'd like to put out for the local people. There is a man at large right now who shot and killed his ex-girlfriend this morning in Baldwin in a business, just went in and shot her in the face Jesus. and killed her. And his name is Gary McDonald. And he is at large right now. They have a bolo out for him and they are trying to find him. You can look up his picture on Facebook. There's also, if you just uh, actually put in Facebook, Scotty McDonald, that's what he goes by. There's a lot of articles on him and pictures. So you can, if you're local, you can keep an eye out for this guy because apparently he is a psycho murderer. And because you mentioned that, I will share that on our page too so okay. if, you get, if you join up on our facebook page we'll have that on there i try to post um when we have local missing persons and things like right. that too um this one isn't as much missing as he really needs to be fine so he can be prosecuted to the full extent of the law because he just cold-blooded murdered a beautiful 26 year old girl yeah who had three um, kids i just can't imagine yeah our shout out this week is to Mr. Whiskas. He's supposed to come and Mr. he's supposed Whiskers. to be. Yeah, he's supposed to record an episode with me sometime in the near future. Fantastic. So. I love him. I love his podcast. It's one of my favorites. And now that we realize that we can get Sahara on here now that she has a new laptop. <laughs> oh, <laughs> laptop. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So we'll we'll try to get that together sometime in the next week or so, sure. uh, and then yeah. And so, Bonna, our our friend. Oh yeah, hi to Bonna, of course. Of course. <laughs> um, and thanks to Bonna also to for appearing in our uh, anniversary. In our anniversary. Sure. Yeah. And thanks, thanks for, for that being with us today. We appreciate your voice. Well, I'm not, yep. I've not been exceptionally talkative or very intelligent, but it's been interesting listening to the story live versus, you know, from on the podcast. Yeah. Um, anyway, I guess we need to wrap this up because it's about time for Sahara to go. So, yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to. Well and I'm going to go eat something out of my air fryer. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we will air fryer sounds good now. next time. In the meantime, right. everybody, talk hard. Talk hard. <laughs>